Hello, Law and Mine people. Uh, this is uh, some more questions that I'd be asking if I was buying a Law and Mine business. And uh, it's, it's uh, always always good to be prepared. So uh, another question that, I asked, that I'd ask, uh, not really expecting too much of an answer for this question, but it's, it's good to ask, is there any kind of guarantee? They, uh, sometimes when you're buying a business, um, the seller is prepared to put like 10% of the uh, ten percent of the payment into an escrow, and you could say, "Hey, look, uh, you know, uh, any any loan that you turn up for your first cut and doesn't get cut, then that can come off the purchase price, you know, to be uh, to be decided, uh, you know, in four weeks' time or something like that." You could try that. It may or it may not work. Chances are, you won't agree to it. Uh, if they're if they're selling part of a business then they may be prepared to do something. I know that when I was selling small lawn mowing rounds and I was running a larger business, I used to have a replacement uh, guarantee. So basically, I'd say to them, if you go to do a lawn for the first time and it falls over, I'll give you a lawn of equal value. And and that was just very, very simple. And that way I, I, knew, that the, I knew that the buyer was getting uh, you know, the best I could give them. So they may be prepared to do that. I'm not, it's, it's not exactly common to have that happen, but it's worth asking. And, uh, and sometimes, even if you don't think it's going to happen at all, it's worth asking to see the reaction of the guy that's selling. If he thinks that you're going to um, lose a lot of the loans when you take over the business for one reason or another, um, then you may see that on his face when you ask that question. Uh, he may look uh, a little bit shocked or something like that. Uh, that's, that's just something, something to look at. If you understand body language, uh, it may tell you something. Another thing to ask is, are there any overdue accounts or bad payers in this list? Uh, if there are, you want to know about them. Uh, who wants bad payers? If there's a very small percentage, then yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, you have to work around with it. Uh, you have to work around it, but another thing uh, that you can ask them is how they how they deal with slow payers, they, whether they have any systems in place. If they've got really good systems, you can assume that uh, that most of their customers pay on time. Now, uh, as I said in, in the last video, we talked about area. I'll go into it a little bit, a little bit more detail now. Um, with an area you want, when you buy a lawn mowing business, you want you want the area to be as small as possible. The smaller the area, the higher turnover you can make. So uh, basically, you you want uh, you want to do as little travelling as possible. If they've got uh, if they've got jobs that are uh, like miles away, you've got to ask yourself whether that job is worth it. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to go drive into a job when you could be doing a job locally. You find uh, if you're talking about a rural job, then you haven't got that choice. I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about lawn mowing rounds and condensed areas, areas of ten thousand or more people. The thing that you could be asking about is: Do any of the lawns involve any free extras? Some people do this. They'll uh, they'll leave a rubbish a rubbish bag out, and the lawn mowing guy will take it away for free, or they'll keep this. Uh, you know this pruned or they'll do this or they'll do that uh, just just ask about that because if, uh, if he says oh, yeah, you know they can put out a few rubbish bags and he'll take them away and you're not prepared to do that then the customers going to say hey look that's fine I'll go somewhere else what they don't realize is that there's not many lawn mine contractors that are prepared to do that they'll go they'll ring around they'll try and find somebody they won't find anybody and uh, but they but another thing that they won't do is they won't come back to you because it's going to uh, they they don't want to come back and say oh I was wrong nobody else is prepared to do this for free either so well so they're just going to move on so you, you don't want too many jobs like that uh, one or two yeah okay but be prepared to lose them unless you're prepared to do the extra work and well. You could start off like that, but I wouldn't. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend it as a way to continue. It's uh, it's not horribly good business practice. Now, uh, another thing you could ask about is: Is there any of his lords have time time or day restraints? 
Now, uh, day restraints aren't too bad. Now, the lawn needs to be done on a Wednesday for some reason. Or if, um, if some lawn, uh, uh, there's a lot of people like their lawns done on Fridays. These are normally yeah, on a Friday. We have a lot of lawns in, nice, uh, in uh, probably one of the nicer parts in town. And, uh, and quite a few of those lawns are being done weekly. So we don't, we don't mind jobs like that. So if they've got Friday lawns, just make sure that they're all, you know, pretty close to each other. You don't want to be running to the other side of town to do a Friday lawn. Uh, if they've got any shift workers on their books, you may want to know about that because some people say, hey, you can't mow my lawn before lunch. If that's something that maybe you can work around, but I normally tend to find that the smaller the window gets, the less I want the job. After lunch, yeah, maybe I can do that. If they say between, uh, you know, 12 and 3, no, nah, no way. That's going to end up costing you money. So uh, you know, I'd, I'd give that one a miss. Now, the next thing I'm going to go into uh, equipment in a little more detail here because we talked about it in the last video, but uh, but you really, equipment is important and we do, we do need to talk about it now. So what equipment's going with the business? You want a list of the equipment. You want all the makes and models. And then uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to know uh, how old the equipment is. Is there anything that he's selling you that's completely outdated? I uh, I was talking to a guy the other day that bought a, who was looking at buying a business and one of the ride-ons, the guy had been waiting for parts for about six months and they hadn't come in. I mean, I wouldn't even buy that machine. So uh, so have, have a look at the machines. Uh, make sure that, uh, you know, that there's nothing that's past its use by date. Uh, make sure that it's all in reasonably good condition. Uh, now, if they're keeping any equipment, uh, find out why. Because if they're selling the business as a whole, they should be selling all the equipment. Uh, if they're selling uh, you a whole lot of lawns and they're not selling any equipment, then you've got to ask yourself, why is that happening? Uh, the chances are that they're going to continue mowing lawns. So um, unless you're prepared to sign a restraint of trade, but then you'd have to you'd have to enforce that. So uh, if if someone's if someone's saying to you, I've got a whole lot of lawns for sale, I want to keep all the equipment, and I'm just selling the lawns, but I'm not going to be mowing lawns, then uh, I, I'd be a bit wary about about buying that business. So uh, if there's any vehicles going with the business, what's the mileage on the vehicles? What kind of condition are they in? Uh, one good thing to do is take the entire equipment list and look it up and see what it's worth second hand on the market because the, uh, the goodwill of the business plus the value of the, of the gear second hand should basically equal his asking price and the goodwill of the business should generally be roughly 12 weeks worth of, uh, worth of turnover. So, uh, so if, if the price is too far off, off that uh, then then you might want to, you know, he might be overpricing his equipment, he might be overpricing his lawns. So you want to look at that. Uh, another thing that you want to do with the equipment is check out the reviews. Go online and see what the reviews are like on the equipment. If there's a common problem um, with one specific piece of equipment that he's got, why, why not check the equipment? Why not make sure that his, his uh, piece of equipment is not having that problem? So uh, that's just a, a few questions you can ask and in the next video I'm going to start talking about things like due diligence and uh, and how to how to do the final check before uh, before you buy the business and what you should be doing once you've taken over the business in order to make it run smoothly uh, I'll talk to you then until then happy lawn mowing people